Hey gang, welcome back to the garage. We're gonna make the algorithm happy today by mentioning what we are doing in the first 10 minutes of the video. So that is putting Dakota digital gauges, these beautiful puppies that uh, took me, I don't know, six months or eight months to get. I ordered them a long, long, long time ago <laughs> anyways. Uh, to put those in the car and uh, we're gonna do the how-to, we're gonna try to walk you through it and uh, make sure that we're a good help for figuring out how to put those gauges in. And I think they're gonna look awesome. Uh, I love the way they look right now. I also got the uh, gauges for the console, the little console gauges. So we're gonna be getting all those, figuring it all out. And one of the things we have to do is we have to figure out how to hook the OBD2 output of the ECM on the LS7 to be all copacetic with the Dakota digital gauges. So this is a how-to video for installing Dakota digital gauges on a 1967 Resto Mod Camaro. You see what I did there? Algorithm. All right, this is all the stuff that's included with the Dakota digital gauges, uh, main gauges, these are the ones for the console. We got some wiring. There's a beeper here. Apparently you need the beeper hooked up to do the programming. And uh, this here, I guess this converts all your inputs into outputs that the gauges understand. And then there's also, where is it? Uh, okay, so I also got this. This from Dakota Digital. And this is for hooking into the OBD2 uh, from the motor. And I should be able to plug this into the gauges somehow, but I have to read through the directions and uh, figure out what goes where or if I even need that that big thing. I might not even need that big thing, but first things first. thought it'd be great to have the GoPro camera on my hat to show you what I was doing right now. And I went to put it on and battery was dead like I didn't use it that much in the last video but there we go it was it was out all right step one according to the directions is remove your old gauges so that would be your old gauge cluster on a 67 68 this is what they look like I think this looks better than the 69 I like the looks of the 69 like the body wise on the on the 69 Camaro better but uh I like the the uh interior of the 67s the best i think they're the best and 68s you may not know this but 68s don't have the little quarter windows so i guess it's a matter of taste that's the difference between the 67 and 68 or one of the little details is the uh, 67s have the quarter windows in the door and the 68s do not and in case you're wondering you can't put a 68 door on a 67 they change the hinges although apparently there's a company that for a thousand dollars that they have custom hinges that you can put a complete 68 door onto a 67 but whatever. Anyways, back to the show. Uh, Dakota Digital supplies you with a little foam, little bits, a little strip of foam, because there's supposed to be foam between here and the gauges themselves. So being that this is brand new, I don't have the old foam. So uh, we're just going to cut little pieces of this brand new foam. I'm glad they have it. Makes it nice. It goes in right, right there, right below where it screws in. So it creates a cushion against your gauges. All right. Uh, and Dakota Digital also supplied brand new screws to hold this onto this, which I think is mighty nice of them. Because these old cars, they use, um, they use uh, like a Phillips screw and up here in Canada to get as many, such a variety of Phillips screws is kind of difficult. It's a lot of it's the Roberts or the square. So it's nice having uh, these brand new, these brand new Phillips screws. That's the star from Dakota Digital. So makes it all very nice. I'm so happy to have that, all that electrical wiring behind me. That's literally behind me, it's right here. Did you get that? Did you get that joke? Yeah, I know, kind of lame. Dad joke, I'm not even a dad. In case you didn't know that about me, no kids. 
Unless you count the 15 staff members I have at Speed World. Although they're kind of my kids. They do call me dad. It's kind of weird. Especially like the one. The one calls me dad in front of her dad. Who comes in and races all the time. That's just kind of unusual. <laughs> I never know what to say. <laughs> you know, with the boys. The boys say, uh, hey dad. And I go, hey son. You know, it's kind of funny. But when the girls say, hey dad. Hey daughter. Doesn't, I don't know. It's, it's not... It's not quite right. So I usually say, hey, sweetheart. Hey, honey. <laughs> it's all fun. I love my staff. They're a good bunch. They're a good bunch. Um, we have, uh, once we get to know them a little better, we often, you know, we, we socialize. You know, we'll have them over for supper or whatever, or go out for supper with them and we stay in touch with our ex-staff members too. I have some of my former staff members that are subscribers to this YouTube channel and they're some of my favorite people. Actually, some of my current staff are subscribers to my YouTube channel. So I gotta be careful what I say here, Parker. <laughs> Parker's gonna be thrilled that I mentioned his name in his video. He's gonna love that. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Look at that. Look how sweet that is. Oh, I dig that so much. Okay, um, now wires. You're supposed to plug in uh, this, these wires and the buzzer. This is the buzzer into the back. I wish the buzzer didn't have quite so long a cord on it. Like, you know, it's already hard enough tucking everything in behind there, but whatever. That's what it is. There we go. Cord and buzzer. See. Next. Oh, apparently now you install it in the dash. So before I do that though, I'm going to, well, let me see. Let's do the console gauges next. So that. Here's the, <laughs> have any of you watching this video ever weighed, like felt this part in your hand? It is unbelievably heavy. This. This is the the whole factory. Like, it, it feels like it's made of lead. It's unbelievably heavy. Like, how come nobody makes a carbon fiber version of this or a plastic? Even a plastic version of this would be great. Because this is this is way too way too robust. It's way too much. Today I am drinking what's called a spiked apple cider. So uh, take apple cider, like non-alcoholic apple cider, and a cinnamon stick in a glass, put it in the microwave, two minutes. All right, two minutes, get it hot. And then pour eh, one and a half, two ounces of apple uh, rye. It's made by a local company just north of here in Gimli, Manitoba, and it's Crown Royal. Uh, Crown Royal makes an apple Canadian whiskey or apple rye, and you pour that in there. It makes a delicious winter drink. Now, when I upload this video, do I have to declare that there's alcohol content or alcohol consumption? I'm not sure. Mm, this kind of, it looks like I have to incorporate this somehow in the, that's ugly. Oh no, I have to keep using this piece. Oh no, that is ugly. No, come on, that can't be. Oh, yes. I have to... Ugh. Gross. That's gross. The, uh... Those little black things, those are little foam pieces. Uh, those are from Dakota Digital. You know, they give you just a roll of the foam and you cut it to size. So, they are cut to size. And then inside there, there's two little threaded studs sticking up. Those correspond with these little cutouts here and here. So let's we'll go in there like that. All right. Can you see that? And then this goes on, this extra heavy piece. There we go. Goes on like so. 
Okay, my fitment problem had nothing to do with the Dakota Digital gauges. It had more to do with this aftermarket gauge housing. One of the holes doesn't line up quite perfectly, but uh, the other three are fine. Um, like, take a, you know, anyways, whatever. It's fine. It's got three. Three out of the four are in there. And with some wrestling, I know I'll get the fourth one in, but it's slightly, it's slightly off. But it has nothing to do with the Dakota Digital Gauges. Okay, so once those are in, that's all nice. Then you take this plastic plate, and that goes on the back side. It just fits on there. It just slides in there like that. And they supply screws. Screw it on. Jobs a good one. Been watching too many British YouTube ch channels. <laughs> That's where I get that from. I've been watching a lot of Cletus McFarlane lately too. Pretty soon I'm gonna start saying shoo wee or whatever else that redneck says. <laughs> He's actually from Kansas. So he can't be that bad because I love people from Kansas. Okay, there we go. That's all in. So let's check, let's check what's next up. Okay, we have the GoPro fired back up again. All right, so what I've done here is I've taken this box and I haven't used any of the inputs because I have my OBD2 for that, but I do need to wire this to ignition power. This one's 12 volt constant and that one is ground. So I've taken care of that. Now let's wire up this unit. Okay, so first thing up is okay, these wires here. There's, well, let me take that one apart so, I can, so it's not confusing. Okay, so you have this wire here uh, and it's like a, a Y, so it's the two into one. And I don't think there is uh, preference because it seems to go either way oh yeah there we go okay so that goes in there like so and then like this um, let's see here which goes and then this wire This little what? This little bugger right here, that plugs in. One of these plugs in. Yeah, here we go. Plugs in here like that. Okay. And Dakota Digital gives you several of these cables. So that one, it's all really plug and play. So that goes there like that. This other one, let's see, I'm looking for a four, eight, okay. And then this one goes in here. All right, so that's, that unit's all plugged in, everything, oh, no, not quite, not quite. We still have the buzzer. We have our buzzer to plug in. Let's plug in our little buzzer. go buzzer attached okay now other side of this plugs into these this one it has eight little pins so that obviously goes in where there's eight little pins this one oh that one's also eight pins hmm what goes in there what goes in there oh right here's another cable this goes in where there's six pins up here so now where does, oh, I see, okay, okay. This six pin, yeah, there's six pin there. There's only one spot that fits and that, it says here, clock cable. So, well, that makes sense. So that, because there's a clock in here, right? Okay, so that goes there. This one has eight little pins. This is coming off of the big display. 
and this goes to display cable which has eight pins okay so that was easy enough okay then there's a switch there's a switch i'm supposed this goes on the, now i'm I'd like to make sure that all wiring works before I make it pretty. So that's why I've not just, I haven't just put all the gauges in the dash and everything. Like I wanna make sure everything works first. So I'm just gonna plug this all in first to make sure, where does this switch? Oh yeah, switch. There's a place mark switch. So that's where that goes. And then BIM. The BIM is that uh, OBD2. Let me get that there over here. I've already got that hooked into my OBD2. And hmm, wait a minute. Have I got something wrong here? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Oh, ha! Found it. Okay. Okay, um, one moment, one moment, let's figure out, I have to make sure that I got the right camera angle so that everybody can see what I'm doing. Okay, so this six pin, this comes from the OBD2. So that plugs into this BIM0102. This is also from Dakota Digital. And then, this little four pin deal goes from this box into this one. It doesn't seem to specify which one of these little four pin plugs it goes in, so come on, which one? There we go. Okay, let's see. Everything's all plugged in. All right, everything's all plugged in. Let's take a look. I should be able to now turn the ignition on and see what is happening. Okay. Whoa, check that out. Can you see that? Now, we got a beeper, we got an error message of some kind. Okay, well. Let me read through the instructions and see what that error message could be. Check these out. The reason that it was beeping is because I needed to go into setup mode. Now it's in setup mode, you can change the color of the lights, the intensity, just look at that. And I, you can change what these little displays do and warnings and it's all, and it's on Bluetooth. Like I just hooked up through Bluetooth and I'm able to change all that stuff with my phone. It's unbelievable. Well, I guess the next step is gonna be actually putting them in. Oh, actually, let's see if the tack works. I'm gonna start the car up. It's been the first time in a while. Let's see. Look at that. God, that's amazing. <laughs> uh, I can't run it for long because, uh, yeah, you know, carbon monoxide and all. But anyways, okay, I'm going to stick these all in the dash. I got to get them in there and start uh, making this all pretty because it's, uh, it's a big old mess in here. So I'm in the middle of installing the gauges in the dash. Okay, well, they're installed. But now I'm finding a home for this box and I've chosen in here in the kick panel. So when there's a kick panel here, it'll... It'll be hiding all that, but what I have learned is some pretty amazing stuff about the Dakota Digital gauges. Okay, I know it's upside down now, but uh, this engine right here, if you hook your check engine light, like if I have a check engine light because of the ECM running the LS7, if I hook this into it, it has a check engine light in the gauges. It also has, you can hook your brake light into here and there's an indication 
high beam is in there, left, right, all that stuff. So I just need to hook up the wires from the American Auto Wire, like as an example, I just hooked up the high beam. Uh, so there is a wire marked high beam indicator. So I took that wire, I routed it through there and I've attached it there. And now it will light up in the dash when I have the high beams on. So I don't know, I just had to say I'm super impressed with that, uh, all that stuff. So I'm actually landing up using more of this box than I had originally anticipated. So I'm gonna continue wiring away and hacking away at this and getting these wires rooted correctly and then uh, I'll show you what I'm done. Okay, I still have all the settings to do, but here's the gauges. And um, yeah, as you can see here, look, left turn signal, right turn signal, headlights, and let me hit the high beams. See that? Bottom right side, high beam. And uh, all those gauges. And there is so much stuff. There's so much flexibility in the settings and it's Bluetooth and you can set things with your phone and you can make the needles brighter and dimmer and you can set what causes the buzzer to go off. It will warn you when you're low on fuel or your oil pressure is low or anything like that. I'm very impressed with the whole system. I just got to tidy up all my wiring now. Don't look at that. Don't look at that. Uh, yeah, so yeah, it has... Uh, you can reset your odometer for, you know, your fuel. Oh, it'll actually tell you how much range you have in your fuel. You can program to tell you how many miles are left on a tank of fuel. I mean, this is crazy. All the modern stuff in these gauges. This car is called Key Lime. That's kryptonite, coolant, sage, green flag, minty fresh, turquoise, clear view, road trip, quenched, denim jacket, nightfall, amethyst, garnet pink, candy store, Pink slip, salmon, grenadine, faded red, red anodized, red lighted, grapefruit, trophy gold, chocolate cone, staged, shift, log book, candlelight, barn find, cool light, warm light, or just white. That's it for the install of the Dakota Digital Gauges in a 67 Camaro. I hope you learned something. I know I did. I still have to go through the menu and do some programming and calibrating of the fuel level sensor and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, there we are. And uh, very impressed with the Dakota Digital stuff. I was not happy about the long wait, but now that they're here and I've got it in, wow, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. This is why everybody, all the top top uh, shops put this in their, uh, retro, in their uh, resto mods because so, it's awesome. But anyways, all right, uh, like and subscribe and leave comments. Comments are awesome. And we'll see you in the next one.